And right here on this tree root, we have another gorgeous little Weller salamander snapping at this insect here. I was not expecting to see that. What's up everyone? I just made it here to my destination and I am currently standing at just under 5,000 feet above sea level and as you can see I am actually inside of a rain cloud right here. So really unique experience but right here on this tree is an absolutely massive female Yonalasi salamander. Now I know I have filmed these in a previous video but they were at a much lower elevation area um, I'm about at least 3,000 feet higher right now than where I was in that video and I believe this individual is larger than any of the Yonalossies that I found that night I mean just look at her ridiculous girth ridiculous length just an absolutely massive Plethodon Yonalossi just hanging out on this tree here now this is the highest I have ever seen one of these on a tree typically they're just near the base of it so really cool to see it must be this perfect human night up here but yeah I'm just going to leave her to what she's doing get some good pictures of her and hopefully we will be seeing some more of these tonight right here we have a little northern gray-cheeked salamander now these are the most common species up here in these really high elevations. This is just a little sub-adult right here. They get quite a bit bigger than this, but they reach ridiculously large numbers and typically they outnumber every other salamander where they do occur. These are from the genus Plethodon, much like the Yonalasi salamanders, but they are a bit less habitat specific. Not quite as secretive. You can often find these under rocks and logs in the daytime. Whereas the Yonalasi salamanders come out later. Right here, we have another little northern gray cheeked salamander. Regardless of how common they are, these are still really cool to see. So I'm just going to leave them to what they are doing here and keep on shining for some more beautiful high elevation salamanders. And right here we have another good size Plethodon Yonalasi. This individual is much slimmer but still has a really good length to it. Absolutely beautiful. This one is just crossing the trail here. As you can see, it is only about 9.30 p.m. right now. So this is typically the time you start seeing these guys come out of burrows and emerge from crevices, but when it is really wet, and humid like this sometimes that can speed things up a bit but yeah i expect it to only get better as the night goes on hopefully we will see some weller salamanders possibly even some northern pygmy salamanders in the higher elevations and a little more diversity to go along with these but just look what a beautiful salamander you never can go wrong with yonalasses i never get tired of seeing them just an absolutely beautiful amphibian and I'm going to leave this guy where he's at here, take a few quick pictures, and keep on hiking, and we will see what else we can find. Here we go. This is one of the species that I was hoping to see tonight. This is the Weller's salamander. Not the prettiest example of the species, but still a really nice little Weller's. Now, these are extremely rare. Um, they are limited only to the higher elevations. It is rare to see one of these under 4,000 feet above sea level. So because of that, they are only limited to a few specific mountaintops in extreme northeastern Tennessee, um, western North Carolina, and a small portion of southwestern Virginia. Now this little guy, as you can see, is actually missing a back leg here. 
it appears to be trying to regenerate that could have been that could have been caused by any number of things could have been a larger salamander like a yonalasi salamander could have been any number of predators even ringneck snakes will come up here into these higher elevations and try to eat these little guys but yeah absolutely gorgeous little whaler salamander i'm just going to leave him to what he is doing here and keep on shining and hopefully we will see just a few more and right here we have another northern gray-cheeked salamander plethodon montanus beautiful little individual these are absolutely everywhere tonight I'm just going to leave it right here. Hopefully he will find him a female here in just a little bit. And I'm going to keep on shining for whaler salamanders. And right here on this tree root, we have another gorgeous little whaler salamander snapping at this insect here. I was not expecting to see that. Apparently these guys are voracious little predators. It just kind of happened as I was filming. What a rare thing to catch. As you can see, these little guys are small insectivores. They kind of have the projectile tongues like other plethodon, even like the Aeneides. Um, a lot of the fully terrestrial lungless salamanders have those. But yeah, really cool observation. I just walked up on that. It appears to still be chewing on whatever it just grabbed there. Now the biggest threat to the Weller salamander is actually climate change because they live on these high elevation mountaintops where there is actually a really cool climate year round. And they depend upon forests that are dominated by spruce fir trees. And it's making a break for it now. But anyway, if these habitats heat up too much in the future, the spruce fir trees will actually eventually die and this will not be so much of like a temperate rainforest like it is right now the habitat will dry out oh well i lost the whalers as i was watching something run and there goes a northern gray cheek salamander but anyway as i was saying just small differences in temperature could absolutely destroy the habitat for these guys and put them at immediate risk of extinction. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that because all salamanders are actually at risk due to climate change, but Weller salamanders especially are. But since that one just ran away, I'm going to keep on shining and hopefully we will see some more cool amphibians or just some cool observations like that, like that Weller's eating. So, yeah, we will see what we can find. Right here we have a pretty unique looking Carolina Mountain Dusky Salamander. You typically don't see these this light of a gray. They are normally either darker or they have the orange stripe. But this is the first one I have seen like this. Really unique looking individual. Gorgeous coloration. I'm Again, I'm far away from any water up here. At these elevations, the dust magnetis just depend upon the um, wet upland habitat here in the spruce fir forest. And occasionally you can see them on wet rock walls. But there are no actual streams here, so these are extremely terrestrial. But I'm just going to leave this guy where he's at here, and we will see what else we can find. Sitting right here on this rock, we have another absolutely massive Yonalasi salamander. This one might be just a little bit bigger than the first one I found on the tree. Really beautiful. This appears to be a big female here. I'm going to see if I can get her to straighten out here for a size reference. Absolutely huge for a plethodon. As I continue hiking, I'm starting to notice that these Yonalasis are more common down here in these rock piles. 
just below the spruce fir line where you start seeing more of the spruce fir trees and getting into a wetter forest. The Yonalossies are more associated with the rocky slopes and the Wellers salamanders are more associated with the spruce fir dominated forest where there's less rocks and it's more just logs and things of that nature. So yeah, absolutely gorgeous salamanders. These are really pretty up here. Wow, just look at that pattern. As you can see, the red stripe nearly covers both sides. Just absolutely gorgeous, but I'm going to leave her to what she is doing here, and hopefully we will be seeing plenty more of these. And right here we have another northern gray-cheeked salamander. This is possibly the lightest gray one I have ever seen. Normally they are darker than this, especially up here at these elevations. You get some that are almost black, but this one is a really light, almost like a white silver coloration. I have never seen one like that. Not sure if hypomelanism is such a thing in gray-cheeked salamanders, but if it is, that could very well explain why this one here is lacking a lot of the black pigment. Just a really strange, light-colored gray cheek. There has been tons of these tonight, but none have looked quite like this. So I'm going to get some really good pictures of this little guy here and keep on walking this trail and we will see what else we can find. And right here we have another Yonalasi salamander hanging out on this tree root. Not the biggest individual, but still absolutely beautiful. Just these guys and the Weller salamanders alone are a good reason to preserve these high elevation habitats. If you lose the spruce fir forest, you lose these beautiful salamanders. Well, at least the Weller salamanders, these Yonalossies are a bit more adaptable, but they still rely on a very specific habitat and climate themselves. So my phone is dying now. As you can see, my flash just went off here and this is the light from my spotlight. So I'm just going to leave this little guy on this tree root here and we will see what else we can find. Holy crap. I don't believe they get much bigger than this. As I was driving down the road here, I just stopped at this nice moss-covered palace rock bed here and found by far the largest Yonalasi salamander of the night. Maybe not lengthwise, but the girth on this big girl is absolutely insane. Has to be a gravid female at this size. Absolutely beautiful. Would you just look at that? Really chunky. Lots of red. You see a few blotches there where the there's some black showing through, but absolutely gorgeous. Really laid back. You want a lossy salamander? No, don't go off the rock. Go right back up there where you was at. What a beauty. I don't think I'm going to get any yawn losses any bigger than this, so I think it's safe to call it a night here. My phone battery is really low, so I'm going to keep cruising as I head down the mountain here, and hopefully we will see some more stuff, but it's going to be hard to top this. I mean, just look at her. This is what I came out to see tonight. Just an absolute beast of a yawn salamander. This is a perfect example of why this species is the largest members, member rather of the genus Plethodon, along with the Pigeon Mountain Salamander. So beautiful. I'm going to get some pictures of this big girl and head on down the mountain and we'll see what else we can find. 